Today I'm writing music about murder. I've been commissioned to write a new 40 minute ballet score which is going to tour the UK in 2025 and essentially it is about death and murder and all things nice like that. Um, so there's a lot of extremely dark music coming up on the channel over the next little while which I'm really excited about. Maybe I shouldn't be excited about but I'm very excited to share this, uh, this process with you um, over the next little while. Um, so, so far I've written the first kind of opening statement of the piece, the first more or less three minutes of it, um, which I'm going to talk about in this video today. Because actually the first kind of three minutes of the first opening statement of a, of a big work like this is really important because um, it's kind of stating my case as a composer, I'm developing my palette, I'm, I'm kind of exposing what my ideas are going to be and using it um, as kind of like the foundations, uh, the kind of launch pad uh, for development for creating this big 40 minute piece. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to play this really short um, three minute opening statement um, of, this, of this work and then uh, do a score breakdown and then show you how I might develop some of these ideas and how I've kind of left room for development. So here is the playback of just this first three minutes unmixed recording of uh, the opening of this um, murderous ballet. So that was the opening um, kind of gambit of this, what will be a 40 minute um, murderous ballet score. Um, I can't tell you much more about um, kind of the plot or anything like that, um, but hopefully you can hear there is a certain level of darkness involved um, and will be in this piece. Um, this is a complete uh, kind of messy sketch. Um, there's, there's nothing's been bust, nothing's been grouped. When I'm writing a piece that's not orchestral, um, is I'm just kind of grabbing sounds um, as and when they're sort of required and kind of chucking them in. 
Um, so I'm going to give you a kind of breakdown of uh, of what's on the go here. So I'm using many instances of Omnisphere. So this one here is a, a very important Omnisphere patch. I'm doing a lot of automation um, with this. So let me just open up um, the different um, automation lanes that we've got here and I'll kind of talk you through what each of them are sort of doing. So there are uh, four different um, synths um, here or samples um, that we're using uh, in this patch. And for three of them, I'm altering the pitch of them independently. So you can set this up really easily in Omnisphere. If you right click on any um, parameter that you want to change, and you can just click on uh, enable host automation, then you go in and you can find it in the, in the lane and you can automate everything in Omnisphere, which is absolutely incredible. But what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm altering each of the, the fine tune fine tune pitch of each of the, the three kind of musical uh, synths. So they are slowly over time uh, kind of detuning themselves. So that's a development that's going on um, over a bit of time. Uh, this pan man offset is un unnecessary. I don't know why that's still there. Um, and then, okay, we've got modulation and expression, um, which make changes to the kind of timbre and the sound of the patches. And then kind of the most important one, if I open up um, Panman from um, from Sound Toys, which is an amazing um, piece of kit, which I love using and is really useful for this kind of sound design. So what I'm doing here is I'm altering the width of um, of the the pan at the start. You'll notice that it's actually coming in pretty mono; it's hardly moving at all. And then it develops and grows so that actually it's becoming this much more wide and um, kind of all-encompassing um, sound so it's really kind of covering a lot of the stereo field and this is a really critical part of um, kind of the opening of this work is that everything in a lot of cases kind of starts quite small and becomes wide and kind of becomes bigger so everything is kind of focused on the middle with the um, with the very simple piano which is pretty centre and then everything just widens out and becomes bigger and more ominous and more kind of oppressive and impressive as it goes on. So I'll just play a couple of uh, bits of this on its own so you can kind of hear it, how it changes. Here's the first couple and then if I skip on a little bit So hopefully you'll be able to hear, um, particularly if you're wearing headphones, um, that that becomes much more almost kind of disorientating. That's kind of what, it, what I want it to sound here. So that's an important part of it. And then also with the kind of subtle detuning as well, that just gives it a tiny bit more sort of development. So this is the sort of thing that I'm doing um, to a lot of these sounds here. And then we come to the brand new concussion drums from um, Crow Hill Company. And uh, this is the first piece that I've actually um, written with them. And I have to say that I think that the instrument is absolutely incredible. And um, I'm really, really enjoying using it. The amount of control that you get is incredible. And I think the quality of sounds is, is very, very good, particularly at the price point that they have at. That's my plug for uh, CHC uh, out the road. But what I'm actually doing here is I'm altering the sound a lot. I did this very quickly. So we've got two different panmans on the go. Why am I doing that? And then we're using some decapitator as well to make it much more distorted. So that's... Um, Concussion low drums, um, which one are they? Just traditional strikes. Again, I think I'm just using the preset here. Let's just listen to a little bit more concussion. Amazing colenio sound um, from concussion. Um, this is just low strings. Every string all at once. Again, just a preset. Amazing sound. Okay, and then uh, low repeated surdos. This is my favorite one. I 
again, I'm just using the preset and making very subtle changes. Um, one thing that I have noticed is I'm just using the close mic um, just because I will mix this later on and put it all in the same room. So actually having, if I turn the wide and the ambient on, I think it becomes a bit much. It just needs that slightly more focused sound for me. But that is an amazing sound. Um, what am I doing to it? Oh, I'm put, put on a Pro Q3, but I haven't done a single thing to it. Excellent. Okay, uh, next up, epic low percussion. Let's get epic. We certainly did. I might actually... And then, oh, trash hats, which are fantastic sound. Um, Oh, I love the ratchets. Um, I'm doing a bit of pan man on them as well. They come in here. So let's just go. For so again, with the ratchets, I'm using pan man just to move it left and right a little bit. Again, kind of adds to the idea of things at the opening being extremely mono and then towards the end being much, much wider. Okay, so that's a concussion um, percussion, uh, percussion drums that I'm using here, which are kind of all these instruments here. I should really bust them together, but oh well. So this next one called reverse glitch is a really important sound, which I'm going to utilize a lot um, within, the, within the whole piece. And the reason um, why I'm going to use it so much is because it's quite arresting, I think, and it's very extremely different uh, timbrely um, from the kind of natural nature of the piano. So it's kind of contrasting the two and that's a real kind of feature of this work. So I'm just going to talk you through what this is doing and I'm just going to open up the automation and make it a bit bigger so you can see um, what's going on here. So if we look at, let's just make sure all of the ones I'm using are open. Yeah, I'll do. Great. Okay, so let's just go through it kind of one by one. Uh, this one unused. Um, I was just turning off Tremolator, which ended up creating a big click, so I got rid of that. Modulation and expression, um, as you expect, essentially makes it do more and then do less and then do more again. Okay, management, which is um, this here. Um, so what I'm doing is, as it starts, it's, it's actually beginning quite far away in the... Um, it's actually beginning pretty far away. And then as we go through, it scoops closer and then away again, and then suddenly towards the end, rushes forward again. So it's got that real sense of kind of like a, a, a wave, a very fast wave. So that's kind of what I've done there, which is really easy to do in management. Um, at the same time, I'm shifting the pitch of it. So as it goes further away towards the middle of it, it goes slightly up in pitch. And then as it, um, comes closer and reaches its climax and gets louder, suddenly the pitch starts descending. So those are all the things that are happening at one go. Uh, and then I'm also um, turning off or really reducing the level of the tremolator just at the moment where, um, where I want everything to kind of cut away. Um, it just gives it a sense of the, the carpet kind of being pulled out, out from, from under it. So it just immediately kind of snaps it off straight away. Um, and of course, management going right the way to the back of the, the room also helps. So these are the sort of uh, fine details that I'm paying attention to um, when I'm, I'm creating sounds like this. Now, what I also am doing is, obviously I want to use this sound later on in the future. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing to organize this. So I'm right clicking on it and I'm saving channel strip setting as. And I've created a folder here with uh, this and I've already got um, three of these um, these um, patches in here, um, because obviously this is all going to be in um, not in one huge forty-minute logic session. That would that would be mental to deal with. 
but it's going to be in lots of different chunks. But obviously I want to use the same main piano sound. I want to use the same low digital park sound. I want to use the same reverse glitch that we just spoke about. So when I start a new uh, project and working on like section two or section three, I can just call in these, these patches and it'll sound exactly the same and I can automate it in the same way and I know how they'll respond. And this is a really important um, thing because it means that I can keep referring back to this opening idea and that's such a critical thing to do when you're writing a big piece like this is that you keep referring back to kind of the first thing people heard so that you're kind of developing um, things which, which sort of make sense. Okay, next up we have um, kind of the, the main instrument of the whole work and it is um, this Steinway piano from East West. And I suppose the overall kind of concept of the work just now is that we have this quite plain, um, normal sort of piano being sort of disturbed by um, the digital barking of um, of this kind of distorted world that I'm sort of creating around it. And it's almost like the piano is the sort of humanity and the death is the old kind of digital kind of sound that's sort of around it. Um, that's the kind of way I'm sort of seeing it just now. And I think that kind of works of this sort of digital versus um, acoustic, um, alive versus dead um, sort of concept is how I'm sort of seeing it. I think it's a really great sound. I have no kind of issues with it particularly. So what I'm doing quite regularly is I am mixing the main piano with this detuned organ sound. I'm using an Omnisphere patch for this. Uh, it's got four uh, sounds in it and if I just open up the automation for this, um, this is the organ patch even though it says Steinway Piano I just copied it down. And just for quickness this is the detuned organ patch. So you'll see that all of the four instruments within the Omnisphere patch are being detuned but at slightly different times and paces and and uh, and and lengths of of uh, of detuning so the whole thing just feels like it's almost sort of damaged or, or breaking or, or just not quite working and that's kind of the idea. Then I'm using management at the beginning here of quite wide and then it becomes wider but as it becomes wider it starts moving further away so it becomes a bit more distant. So this is what the organ and piano sound like here. You can really hear how it begins to become much um, much lower in pitch and it just begins to sort of just add that sense of the piano again just sort of being almost subsumed or overwhelmed by the sort of digital world that, that surrounds it. Okay and then we've got oh yeah these I'm quite happy with so at this part here we've got hard pan left and right um, kind of pulsing. And these are stating the same chords that you get here. Which are sort of like the second main theme. So again, I'm using um, from Sound Toys Tremolator, um, which is a great um, effect to use. Okay, and then we come to some Spitfire Audio um, Aperture which is a synth I've used for quite a few years now. Thanks but no thanks is my favourite of them, I think. So I'm using it quite a lot in this. But it has that kind of uh, baked in um, portamento, that glissando, um, which just sounds like a, an animal wailing, a brilliant, brilliant sound. Um, I give instruments weird names this is this is bass groan and this is a mix of aperture for noise's sake um some omnisphere i've mistitled that but so be it 
and some trillion. I think this is the first trillion I've actually used. Um, just a little too quiet. So each element um, combines to make this this big bass sound. And again, I'm doing a little bit of these are all automated, so they kind of move around. So it starts off again quite mono and gets gets kind of kind of wider. Um, I'm using some filter on it as well, low fattener, just making little decisions about um, about how the sound of it should be. Not mixed decisions, but kind of creative, creative sound decisions. So, um, of course, this is all automated as well. So a really kind of distant, ominous uh, kind of effect that's that's coming in there. Oh yeah, I am also using some Abbey Road Orchestra, just to kind of highlight the strings, uh, the chords. Uh, obviously that needs a lot of work and kind of making it more legato. These are just placeholders. Then later on, I'm actually mixing it again to give it a bit more definition with um, Cinematic Studio um, solo strings, just to give it a bit of clarity. which I think um, just gives a little bit of support to the piano, uh, the piano's kind of natural sort of sound. Um, that's kind of the way I'm sort of thinking about it anyway. So that's all the elements um, that I'm using in this, in this work. Um, and I suppose the thing that it allows me to do is to sketch, just have, you know, random moments of inspiration almost, which don't happen often enough. Um, but this is a potential idea which I might use later on, which uses the same opening um, piano theme which I hope will be recognisable because it's so simple hopefully people will kind of recognise it it's really easy and this is another kind of iteration of it which I might might use later on So that's one kind of sketch that I just sort of wrote down and I'll keep it, I might use it later on, it might be 35 minutes in the ballet when we need a slightly different atmosphere but for it to still feel related um, to the opening. Um, so that's kind of one sketch I might do. And then this one here, oh yeah, this is a river scene. Um, I think these are the same idea as well. So you can hear that that uh, piano idea is exactly the same really, really super simple descending minor third idea, but I've just transposed it down by like a minor third, I think. So this is how I'm taking, or how I can take, this really super simple, almost almost too simple um, piano idea in the opening of this work, and how I can kind of hear it in being recontextualized and developed in new ideas. And for me, this kind of comes from, from my training is, is sort of really being super clear about what my ideas are and what the kind of what the, the DNA of a work is. And by doing that, it means that I'm, I've got a kind of solid foundations of what the piece is about. You know, if you listen to the first three minutes of this work, well, the opening is the piano idea. The kind of second statement is where it develops into these four chords. And then it returns to the same idea, but with alterations. So essentially there's only two main ideas here, the, the piano melody and the chords. And um, that's all it needs in the opening. This is, these two ideas are going to become the kind of DNA 
for this work. And the simpler they are, the more room I have to grow and develop them later on. Um, I'm sketching the next kind of section of it and I'm already integrating that kind of descended, descending uh, minor third idea into it in a different kind of context. But because I've made it really clear, I think, what the, what the melody is in, in the opening, um, when audiences kind of hear this idea later on, even in a different concept, they're still hopefully relating it back to, to the opening because I've made the idea really clear and perhaps too simple, but, but very, very simple and leaving me plenty of room over 40 minutes to develop them. So that is a little look at how I'm starting off this 40 minute ballet about murder. It's pretty dark, isn't it? And I'm really looking forward to actually pushing the envelope and seeing how dark and detuned and ugly and distorted and broken and death-like I can make um, my palette as the work develops. So please, if you enjoyed this video, um, give us a little like, do drop us a subscribe. And if you have any questions about my process or any comments, um, please let me know down below. I'll be very happy to get back to you. Um, stay tuned for more dark music, I guess, over the next little while. Thanks so much for coming along. See you next time. Cheers.